Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. In this video, I'm going to talk about some very rapid climate change, specifically the very rapid change from the global cooling scare to the global warming scare. Let's look at what Walter Cronkite and CBS News had to say in 1972. British professor Hubert Lamb says that a new ice age is creeping over the northern hemisphere. Even then, it won't be as bad as the last ice age 60,000 years ago. Then New York, Cincinnati, St. Louis were under 5,000 feet of ice. Presumably, no traffic moved and school was let out for the day. And that's the way it is, Monday, September 11th, 1972. There's a high probability that my use of that clip will get this video banned. It's an inconvenient part of history which CBS News doesn't want you to know about. If that happens, I'll simply re-release the clip using subtitles or my own voice. Now let's look at what Jessica Savage in NBC News had to say a decade later. The Reagan administration has proposed making airbags or automatic seatbelts mandatory for new cars. Critics urged immediate action. And finally, a federal report today predicted possible catastrophic warming of the Earth by the 1990s with the strong climate change. I'm Jessica Savage in New York. More news later on this NBC station. So sometime between the early 1970s and the early 1980s, the press switched from the global cooling scare to the global warming scare. In order to narrow this down, let's look at a 1978 video featuring Steven Schneider from the National Center for Atmospheric Research. Climate experts believe the next ice age is on its way. According to recent evidence, it could come sooner than anyone had expected. Weather stations in the far north, temperatures have been dropping for 30 years. Sea coasts, long free of summer ice, are now blocked year round. According to some climatologists, within a lifetime, we might be living in the next ice age. If an ice age is coming, what can we do to stop it? Nuclear energy might be used to loosen polar ice caps. Sea ice could be melted by covering it with black soot to increase the absorption of sunlight. Dr. Steven Schneider is a climatologist from the National Center for Atmospheric Research. Can we do these things? Yes. But will they make things better? I'm not sure. We can't predict with any certainty what's happening to our own climatic future. How can we come along and intervene then in that ignorance? You could melt the ice caps. What would that do to the coastal cities? The cure could be worse than disease. Would that be better or worse than the risk of an ice age? Also in 1978, the New York Times reported that there was no end in sight to the 30-year-long cooling trend. So sometime between 1978 and the early 1980s, they switched from the global cooling ice age scare to the Earth is going to be destroyed by the 1990s from global warming. This is a remarkably fast transition. But we can actually narrow it down even further. On November 25, 1981, the Chicago Tribune reported, Climatologists now blame recurring droughts and floods on a global cooling trend that could trigger massive tragedies for mankind. Let's take a close look at the time frame. This was the end of November 1981. And less than two years later, NBC News was saying the exact opposite. And finally, a federal report today predicted possible catastrophic warming of the Earth by the 1990s with the strong climate change. I'm Jessica Savage in New York. More news later on this NBC station. In 1981, climatologists said that global cooling could trigger massive tragedies for mankind. And less than two years later, they were predicting catastrophic warming of the Earth by the 1990s. What an incredible scam these people are pulling. Now let's take a closer look at this big switch and how they have attempted to cover it up. This book was published by the BBC in the early 1970s. Nigel Calder, The Weather Machine and the Threat of Ice. Calder actually did some investigation, unlike current BBC climate journalists. Fifty years ago, Calder said, The threat of a new ice age must now stand alongside nuclear war as a likely source of wholesale death and misery for mankind. 
That sounds pretty scary. Now let's look at other journalistic evidence for this big flip. In 1961, the New York Times reported that there was unanimous agreement among scientists that the Earth was getting colder. There was disagreement about the cause of the cooling, but there was no disagreement that the Earth was cooling. By 1970, the United States and Soviet Union were both worried about why the Arctic was becoming more frigid, why parts of the Arctic sea ice have recently become ominously thicker, and whether the extent of that ice cover contributes to the onset of ice ages. Also in 1970, the Washington Post reported, Colder winters held dawn of new ice age. And they said that's the forecast being given out by climatologists. A year later, the Washington Post reported, U.S. scientists sees new ice age coming. The world could be as little as 50 or 60 years away from a disastrous new ice age, a leading atmospheric scientist predicts. Dr. S.I. Rasool of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and Columbia University says that. The paper the Washington Post was referring to was actually authored by Rasool and Schneider. Schneider being the NCAR scientist we just saw in the Ice Age video. In that paper, Rasool and Schneider said, The main conclusion of this part of the study is that even an order of magnitude increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere by human activities, which at the present rate of input is not expected within the next several thousand years, may not be sufficient to produce a runaway greenhouse effect on Earth. And then they said, it is found that even an increase by a factor of 8 in the amount of carbon dioxide, which is highly unlikely in the next several thousand years, will produce an increase in the surface temperature of less than 2 degrees Kelvin. So NASA and NCAR knew 50 years ago that a runaway greenhouse effect is impossible. In 1972, 42 top American and European climate investigators met at Brown University. And then they wrote a letter to President Nixon which said, the present rate of the cooling seems fast enough to bring glacial temperatures in about a century. In 1974, the National Center for Atmospheric Research released this graph. It showed no net warming from 1870 to 1970. There was rapid warming from about 1910 to 1940, and then rapid cooling from 1940 until 1970. This is not a hockey stick. Rather, it is cyclical behavior. And note that the warming occurred when CO2 was lower, and the cooling occurred when CO2 was higher on the right side of the graph. This cooling completely destroyed the idea of runaway global warming. The March 1, 1975 issue of Science News said, The Ice Age Cometh, and showed glaciers plowing through Manhattan. The June 24, 1974 issue of Time Magazine said, Another Ice Age. Telltale signs are everywhere. The front page of the March 2nd, 1975 edition of the Chicago Tribune said, Burr, new ice age on way soon. Nobody pimps global warming fraud harder than the Guardian. But on January 29th, 1974, they said, Space satellites show new ice age coming fast. This June 12th, 1974 Associated Press article featured Stephen Schneider on the left and Dr. Walter Orr Roberts on the right. These were the two best-known scientists at the National Center for Atmospheric Research here in Boulder, Colorado. They were talking about global cooling causing food shortages and death by starvation for millions. Every imaginable bad thing which now gets blamed on global warming 45 years ago was blamed on global cooling. In 1976, Stephen Schneider wrote a book about his global cooling experiences. He was upset that no one at the White House was listening to his global cooling fear-mongering. The most famous global cooling article was the April 28, 1975 edition of Newsweek. The cooling world. Climatologists are pessimistic that political leaders will take any positive action to compensate for the climatic change or even to allay its effects. They concede that some of the more spectacular solutions proposed, such as melting the Arctic ice cap by covering it with black soot or diverting Arctic rivers, might create problems far greater than those they solve. In 1974, Barack Obama's future science advisor, John Holdren, was also pimping global cooling. Holdren was at Berkeley, and his closest associate, Paul Ehrlich, was at Stanford. They wrote this article together. 
A few years earlier, Ehrlich had predicted that there would be a massive worldwide famine by the year 1975. And he proposed poisoning the food and water supply in developing countries to keep the population down. This shows you the caliber of the people who are involved in climate fear-mongering. But things switched rapidly in the 1980s. We already saw the NBC news clip where they were predicting catastrophic global warming by the 1990s. And in 1989, the United Nations said that unless we solve global warming by the year 2000, entire nations would be wiped off the face of the earth. Governments have a 10-year window of opportunity to solve the greenhouse effect before it goes beyond human control. June 30th, 1989. In 1988, the Canberra Times predicted that the Maldives would be underwater within 30 years. That would have been last year. And this is what the Maldives looked like yesterday. It doesn't really look like they've drowned. In 1988, NASA's James Hansen, the guy who started the global warming scare before Congress, predicted that Lower Manhattan would be underwater within 20 or 30 years. That would have been no later than last year. I haven't heard anything about Wall Street drowning, so I'm going to assume that that didn't actually happen. In 2004, The Guardian made these predictions. Britain is plunged into a Siberian climate by the year 2020. Nuclear conflict, mega droughts, famine, and widespread rioting will erupt across the world. So I guess a lot of bad things are going to happen in the next eight weeks. In 2008, NASA's James Hansen predicted that the Arctic would be ice-free in 5 to 10 years. That would have been no later than last year. And Democrats said he was right and described him as a climate prophet. But here's the bottom line. We only have 8 weeks left to save the world from climate catastrophe. Since Democrats believe in this stuff, you think they'd be focused on stopping the 2020 climate catastrophe rather than trying to impeach the president. It's almost like they don't actually believe any of their own nonsense. After trying to scare people about sea level rise for eight years, Barack Obama just bought a $15 million home right on the beach. But here comes the punchline. We saw the remarkable and fast transition from global cooling scaremongering to global warming scaremongering during the early 1980s. This is very inconvenient for climate alarmists, so they've attempted to erase it. At one time, Scientific American was a respectable publication, but now they're trying to make the global cooling story disappear. They now say that the entire global cooling story consisted of nine paragraphs in that 1975 Newsweek article. They want you to believe that this article is the only evidence that there was ever a global cooling scare. What they're doing is straight out of George Orwell's 1984. They're attempting to rewrite the past. As far as I can tell, climate alarmists have no decency, integrity, honesty, interest in science, or interest in history. They're pushing one of the largest scams in human history. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.